Well, good afternoon. I know it's a little early. Uh, I'll let uh, folks catch up and get online. Uh, I had to come to you at four o'clock today here in the kitchen because I've got an Animal Samaritans board meeting uh, coming up at five o'clock. So I wanted to be done with the recipe, uh, but also wanted to be sure that we had some time in the kitchen this week. And I picked one that I really love. It's a very simple recipe and it's very traditional. And you guys probably know a few different ways to make this yourself. Uh, and uh, so we're gonna make some salt and boca. I'm doing chicken, but you can do it with veal. You can even do it with pork cutlets. Uh, hey, Bill, how are you? Bill Golian's watching. So uh, we are prepared to do that today. A great Italian recipe. And I don't know if you guys have been watching uh, that great series. Now, hello, Linda, with uh, Stanley Tucci. But his uh, series on CNN on Sundays is just absolutely fantastic. Hey, Don Bryce, good to see you. My old buddy from high school. And gosh, no, we go all the way back to elementary school, Don and I do. Um, if you haven't seen the Stanley Tucci show, you got to check it out. And they were just in Rome. Uh, this past, the boys, they're very excited. The dogs are just super excited because there's cheese out here. Uh, hello, David Wall. <laughs> nice to see you. Uh, Gator's watching. So we're going to make some salt and boca. Super simple dish. Uh, you know, again, you could do it with chicken or veal. I'm doing it with chicken tonight. But you can also do it with uh, a pork uh, tenderloin cutlet, which is very nice. Hey, Linda, nice to see you. And so what you need, a little chicken or veal, you're, uh, I know it's been, a, we've been, we've been friends for a long time, Don. Um, what you want to do is get your protein of choice. And I've dredged mine in a little flour. And the way I always do this, hey, Danny, uh, I just put the flour and salt and pepper in a plastic bag and then you just uh, shake them up. And then your protein is already dredged in flour and it's a little easier and a lot less mess. Uh, you're gonna need some nice prosciutto and I've got that. Now this was a packaged prosciutto that I got at Gelson's. I like my prosciutto a little bit thinner than this typically. Boy, I know, there's prosciutto. The dogs are so excited. There's prosciutto, there's cheese. And I am gonna be somewhat uh, heretical uh, and I'm gonna do uh, mozzarella on this because that's the way I like it. And of course, what gives salt and boca its great flavor is the sage that we use. So I've got a you know, beautiful fresh batch, and what we're gonna do is put that, along with the, uh, the great prosciutto di Parma, uh, which is a wonderful cured Italian, salty and delicious, and it's, oh, it's so good. And so you don't need a lot of salt in this dish. I've already got the olive oil heating up, so let's go ahead and put it together. By the way, of course it is a cocktail hour, it's a little early, I got a board meeting, so I poured myself a white one. Uh, but cheers. I hope everybody's had a good week. I hope everybody's staying safe. Uh, and I hope that everybody is getting closer and closer. Uh, for those of you who are not yet of the age to get the vaccine, I hope we all uh, get close and get it done. So, um, hey, Pam, cheers. All right, let's make a little salt and boca tonight. You're also going to need a little white wine. I got some of that. We always have white wine somewhere in the house, and you're going to need a little chicken stock as well. So we've got that. Very simple dish, uh, lovely, but as with most Italian dishes that we've made over the last few months, it's the simplicity, uh, the, the relative small number of ingredients, and going back to Stanley Tucci's show, I mean, that's what I loved about watching his thing on CNN on Sunday nights, uh, and he explores different regions of Italy, so he reminded me that we need to do a great Roman dish called Cacio e Pepe which is just basically three ingredients, pasta, cheese, and pepper. It's so good. We'll do that one week. All right, let me get you set up so you can see what we're doing here. There we go. All right, that'll work. So I'm just gonna prepare it right here. All right. Now, I've dredged my, these are chicken cutlets. I pounded them out a little thin because that makes them always a little more tender. And it stretches them out too, which is kind of nice. So again, there's a little salt and pepper in the flour. All right. So those are a couple nice size chicken cutlets. Put that over there. Now, the way that I like to do this, and everybody has a little bit of a different style, but the way that I like to do this is I take my sage and I'm just gonna put one, two, Three, like that, okay? Right on the, on the chicken cutlet. We'll do the same thing over here. Oh, that looks nice. Sage also, you know, fresh sage is such a powerful flavor. Uh, you don't want to overdo it. So there we go. You lay that out. 
hope you guys can see that. Let's see. I'll make it a little, a little easier for you. There you go. So we've laid that out. And then I'm going to, luckily, my prosciutto and my chicken breasts are just about the same size. That's just dumb luck. That, that is nothing more than dumb luck. So I'm going to put that and just press it right on top of the chicken. And what I then do is I take a couple of toothpicks. But when you do this, of course, you always have to remember to remove the toothpicks when you serve it. But this way, I get the toothpick through the chicken breast and through the prosciutto, and it will hold my prosciutto in place because we're gonna be frying these on both sides. So let me just stab that guy there. And, and I put the sage underneath my prosciutto. So that's going to keep it in place as well. Hello, Maureen. Nice to see you. So there's number one. And again, I was very lucky. Do you see how well the, <laughs> the prosciutto corresponds in size to the, to the chicken cutlet? You, sometimes you just get lucky. Today was what was one of those days here in the kitchen. All right, we're going to secure this like that. And uh, just to make sure, uh, sometimes you can see, you know, people will actually take the prosciutto and wrap it around the chicken breast, the chicken filet, uh, which of course is a great way to do it. And as the prosciutto cooks, it will shrink and, like bacon and, and kind of secure itself to the chicken. So that is also a good way to do it. But I prefer this, um, even though you gotta go back in and get rid of the toothpicks before you. So you got your sage, prosciutto and chicken breast. Again, you can do it with veal, just lightly uh, dredge it in flour. And now we're ready to cook them up and we're gonna make the sauce as we go along. So let me bring you over here. Get you guys set. I've got my pan in olive oil there. I hope everybody can see that pretty well. I'll bring you up just a little bit. All right, I've got my olive oil medium high. Uh, that's probably gonna be too much light, yeah. All right, and I've got my favorite set of tongs, and we are ready to go to work and make a little salt and boca, which means it's so good it jumps in your mouth. That's where the phrase comes from. Uh, it has nothing to do with any of the ingredients. Uh, it's just, it, it was, when the dish was first made, it was so good, it jumped into your mouth. So we'll put this in here. I've got my olive oil in there. I used about uh, two tablespoons of olive oil, not a lot. These no-stick pans are pretty good, so all right, there we go. We've got, and I'm gonna need a lid, so pardon me. So what we've got going on, you guys can see that. You're looking right at it. I don't know if I can zoom in or not. We'll try it. Oh, I can. This is fancy. All right. So, uh, hello, Jan. Good to see you. Colleen, nice to see you. I'm just whipping up a little salt and boca for us this evening. Let me dig out a, a lid. Uh, lots of lids. I'm never sure which one will fit. Hey, we got lucky on the first try. So, we're going to let that cook. And... Uh, like I said, I'm being somewhat uh, of a heretic because uh, traditional salt and boca doesn't usually have mozzarella cheese. But I'm going to, well, it depends on where you go and, and who you ask. But I like it like that. And uh, that, for me, makes an Italian dish that much more Italian. So we're going we're gonna to put that on there in just a little bit. But we're going to brown this on both sides. We're going to cook it, pull it off, uh, not, not quite cooked through. And then we're gonna take it off the heat. We're gonna finish making our sauce. <laughs> Anthony DiGiorgio. Yeah, I know, I'm making a small portion. I saw your pastrami sandwich, Anthony DiGiorgio. And uh, my buddy Tony, uh, he's a great singer. He took a picture uh, of him and a giant pastrami. The sandwich was as big as his head. Uh, <laughs> that was a great looking sandwich. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna brown it on both sides, including the side with the prosciutto, then I'm gonna pull it, and then we're gonna have you know, that nice prosciutto flavor. I'm gonna put a couple of sage leaves back into the sauce, 
and we'll uh, mix up the sauce. So let's go back over and see how our veal is doing. And when we're done, I'm gonna top it with a little mozzarella cheese and melt that down. Hello, Rick Ross, nice to see you. Oh, there you go. It's already beginning to look pretty good. I like to get them a little browned up and they're not quite there, but you can already see, I wanna bring you closer so you can see what's going on. You can already see that the prosciutto is starting to shrink up and kind of adhere to the chicken. And you can see the uh, sage underneath there. So this is coming along beautifully. <laughs> sure. Yeah, it was, we're still talking about Tony's giant pastrami sandwich. All right, and you can see we're not quite there yet. They're getting a little color to them, but I want them a little browned up before I flip them over. And I probably could have thrown in a little more olive oil, which I'm gonna have to do when we make it a little saucier. So let me grab that. Normally the olive oil is never put away. We just keep it right here. Oh, that sounds, and I, I'll tell you, the aroma of the prosciutto, when we flip this over, it's gonna be just, it, it fills the whole kitchen. Uh, I love that smell. Uh, and of course, accompanied by the sage, which is a, a, a beautiful spice. It goes. Now we're starting to get a little, a little more color on the bottoms of those chicken cutlets. And again, if you like veal, and I love veal, uh, you can certainly do that. Uh, we get uh, Bristol Farms, I know, has some great veal. Gelson's always has good veal. I get it there. We're just about there. I want you to see the color underneath here. If I can get a hold of this little guy. Where are you? Ah, there we go. Oops, I'll see how. All right. You can see it's got a little color on the bottom side, so we're flipping it over to the pursuit side down. Turn your prosciutto over. Oh, that's nice color on that. And now we're going to cook that down. So we've got that a nice golden brown. And we're going to let the pursuit side cook a little bit. So you can see that the sage leaves are wilting under the heat. And again, I'm not gonna cook it all the way through. We're gonna pull this off in just a moment so that we can uh, make our sauce. Hello, Richie Fauno, good to see you. Oh yeah, Jan, thanks for mentioning that. Uh, I'm doing a thing uh, through Bon Appetit Magazine and it's a favorite chef competition. And you can vote for me up until six o'clock tonight. I've put a link on my Facebook page and the winner's gonna get like 50 grand and a feature in Bon Appetit magazine. And you know, that all sounds pretty good to me. I'd like to do that. Oh, look at this, this is beautiful. I let that cook just a little bit more. That's very nice. So if you are so kind, you can go to, uh, to my Facebook page and find the link and I'll post it again uh, when I post the full recipe. Uh, but you have until six o'clock tonight to vote. And um, I would really appreciate your vote. I'd really appreciate the 50 grand. And being featured in Bon Appetit magazine would be fun. All right, now we're gonna pull the, try to pull the veal, like the chicken actually, I'm not using veal tonight. All right, that looks beautiful. I don't know if you can see that. So now we're ready to finish the sauce. And so the pan is still hot. I'm gonna add a little more olive oil. Just a little bit, like that. I've got, I've reserved the flour that I dredged the chicken in, in case we wanna thicken up the sauce. That's right there. Now, as we uh, always like to do, we're gonna deglaze that pan with a little white wine. Uh, you can, I usually use about a half a cup. Not 
much more. You want something dry and white. Whoa. Turn that down a little bit. I think we can consider the pan deglazed. <laughs> All right. Now, let me get out my... Now, with this nonstick pan, there's not a lot to deglaze. <laughs> so, we're going to mix that in. And now, I am going to get a cup of my chicken stock. So, we've got the chicken stock right here. And of course, the lid is stuck. There we go. I'm going to put a cup of chicken stock in there. Add that in. And we're going to bring the heat back up and let that, and I'm going to put just a little bit of this flour in here. Just a little bit. Like that. And that'll thicken it up, and then we're going to reduce it a little bit. So we've got the white wine, the chicken stock, a little olive oil, and of course the drippings from the chicken itself and the prosciutto. So we do that. Get rid of those little bubbles, and just bring that up. And we're going to reduce it to down to about half. You just not want a nice, rich, delicious sauce. You can serve this. It's great over pasta, obviously. And so you're going to do that, and you're going to get this delicious, bright, flavorful sauce with your pasta. Uh, you could serve it over rice. I like to serve it with potatoes because I like potatoes with everything. My wife will tell you that. So we're just going to bring that back up to temperature. And once we do that, we're going to return the chicken right back into the pan. I'm going to cut back the heat. We're going to let it simmer for just a couple of moments. I'm going to put a couple of pieces of uh, fresh mozzarella on the top of that, let it melt, and then we'll be ready to serve. I just want to get that reduced by a little bit, and you can see we've got a little boil going on, so we can just let that reduce. Stir it around, get all the flavors. And the other thing I like to do while we're doing that is put in a couple more of my leaves of sage. So we can impart that wonderful flavor. Oh, that's nice. You know, and you always want to use a, a good dry Italian white wine. A Pinot Grigio is good for this. Uh, if, you, if you have a nice Chardonnay, that works fine. Uh, I would prefer in this dish, uh, I would prefer... Uh, if you're going to use a Chardonnay, uh, something that doesn't have quite as much oak. Uh, and the other thing we need to put in is a little bit of butter. So, I'm just going to take uh, a couple tablespoons of butter. I always keep my butter out so it's nice and soft. I'm making a mess. There we go. Put that in there. That is going to give your sauce... A little richness, it is going to give it uh, just a nice gloss and sheen to it. And again, since you're working with uh, prosciutto, that's going to be real salty. So if you have unsalted butter in the house, that's probably the preferred uh, method for doing this. So we're just going to let that melt into the sauce. All right, let's return you guys so you can see what we're doing. Sometimes you use vermouth. Interesting, huh? Okay. You use the dry vermouth? Sure. Well, that's, that's a, I've never seen that done. As I said, you know, this is a dish. It goes back a long way. Uh, people make it in the ways that they like to make it. And every, you know, like with tomato sauce and meatballs, you know, all of our families had different recipes. They were all great. Uh, you know, there's no right or wrong way to do it. And my father would say the only wrong thing to do with spaghetti sauce is put sugar in it. All right, now you're starting to see how that's getting a little thick and it's got that beautiful butter in it. So we're gonna just stir that around a little bit more. Keep that temperature up so we reduce a little bit more. 
I like to reduce it, as I said, to about you know half of, of the liquids we started with. So I had about uh, uh, half a cup of white wine and a full cup of chicken stock. So we want to reduce that down to about uh, you know uh, three quarters of a cup of liquid total. And of course, if you're making this to serve over pasta, you want to have a little bit of that extra sauce so you can be generous on the pasta. Oh, that's looking nice. And so we've got the sage leaves in there. Uh, we have all of these wonderful flavors from having pan fried our chicken and prosciutto. And so now we're going to return that to the pan, prosciutto side up, just like that. Just like that, and, oh, look at this creamy, white, delicious, fresh mozzarella. All right, you can tell the heat's come up, and I'm going to back it off a little bit. Now, some people say, don't put the cheese on it. I say, life is too short not to put the cheese on it. So we're going to put a piece there, a piece there. Cut it a little thick, but that's okay. I, I like it like that. And like that, we're going to cover it. And when the mozzarella is nice and melty, we will have ourselves dinner. So, and until that time, I'm going to have to give the dogs some of the mozzarella because that's what they live for. They love. All right, boys, come on. There's one he didn't catch. Guinness caught it. <laughs> they like they like it, and there's a little piece of prosciutto up here that I might share with you because I'm feeling generous. So we're just letting that finish off. I love the flavor of fresh mozzarella. I love the texture, the creaminess of it. I think it adds a lot to the to the dish. Speaking of dishes, let's grab one because we will be serving momentarily. Now, if you have at your house, if you had a little shredded mozzarella, and you wanted to use that instead. Now, I always get the, the, the mozzarella. Uh, it's in the tub with the water because it's just fresher that way. Uh, but, of course, uh, the mozzarella is... One of the great things about mozzarella is it just melts so easily and so easy to work with in dishes like this. So if you're a traditionalist, you probably wouldn't put the cheese on your salt and boca, but that's okay. I'm not that much of a traditionalist, so uh, I always enjoy the fresh flavor of mozzarella pairs so nicely with the saltiness of the prosciutto and, and of course that wonderful chicken and that powerful sage flavor which i love so in just moments we're going to serve that up and we'll take a look at it here so let's get set to see what what we finished up here get my plate ready to go so you guys can see what we're doing See my fresh ingredients right there. All right, I think we're all, oh, 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 that is melty deliciousness. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there we have a little chicken salt and boca. Uh, and I've got some wonderful sauce to pour over that and put on some pasta. Uh, I'm gonna make some green beans to, <laughs> excuse me, green beans to go with that. Uh, and I'm gonna put the sauce on the green beans too. Uh, so again, the sauce is just the butter, the white wine, chicken stock, and a little salt and pepper, which you got from the uh, frying of the uh, the chicken breasts that are covered with that beautiful prosciutto and that lovely sage. So there you go. That is our chicken salt and boca this evening. And whilst we're still here, I think I might, might as well try it. Uh, I need to remember that there is a, a toothpick in there and I found it. There we go. All right. I see you gotta get everything. You gotta get the prosciutto, and the sage, and the mozzarella. Mmm. Oh. Mmm. That's magnificent, if I do say so myself. All right, that is our recipe for chicken salt and boca, or veal salt and boca, or even pork salt and boca.
and it will just about jump right in your mouth. Thank you guys for joining me in the kitchen. I hope you've had a great week. We've got a nice weekend coming up. All the wind of today was very disruptive, but it's calmed down now. And so I'm going to kick back, enjoy a little dinner, and then it's going to be off to my uh, Zoom meeting with Animal Samaritans. If you are looking for a pet, I encourage you to contact Animal Samaritans. We've got lots of wonderful pets who need their forever home. Thanks, Jim. It is delicious. And um, I, I really love working with Animal Samaritans, and I encourage you to support them. It's one of the great pet organizations here in the Coachella Valley. Uh, David Wall, well, all right. Come on, David. Bring Gloria. Gloria Allred and you. And we'll have a, we'll manja, as they like to say in the old country. So cheers. Have a great rest of your week. Have a great weekend. And thanks for joining me for some salt and boca here in the kitchen. Don't forget, if you would, please vote. Uh, for the Bon Appetit Favorite Chef, the link is on my Facebook page, and you will find all of these recipes when I finally get time to download them to my YouTube channel, which is Patrick Evans Cooking. And I'd love to have you subscribe to that. It's free. Boys, that's enough. Uh, once you give them cheese, you got to keep giving them the cheese. Thanks, Sandra. Hey, listen, guys, thank you so much. Uh, don't forget to vote, and we'll see you next week right here in the kitchen.